Many people dream of earning money while they enjoy their free time or even while they sleep. Cryptocurrency offers a range of tools to generate such income. We analyzed several options for earning a passive income using crypto and identified five that seem the most attractive to us based on multiple criteria. We'll delve into the benefits and risks of each one. To accomplish this task, I reached out to several experts in the field. Most of my money is in Ether, uncomfortable staking all of it. If you don't understand the source of the yield or where the yield is coming from, it is most likely that you are the yield. I'm Giovanni, your host, let's jump right in. Staking is a way of verifying and securing transactions on the blockchain. Unlike traditional financial services, which are managed by a centralized entity, cryptocurrency networks allow anyone to contribute to running them and get rewarded for it. That is the beauty of crypto. In staking, you essentially lock up your crypto for a certain amount of time and earn yields from it. This is paid to you because you help secure the underlying protocol. Staking is available on proof-of-stake blockchains such as Ethereum, Solana, Cardano, Polkadot, Avalanche and many more. Most of my money is in Ether and among my Ether, uh, pretty much all of it is staked. I have what I feel is a particularly reliable staking setup and so uh, uncomfortable staking all of it. It's like if you have uh, cash and you could put it in a bank account and earn interest, you'd be better off doing that than just sitting on a pile of cash at home. There are mainly three ways to do staking. The purest form of staking is by running a node directly on the blockchain. That is called native staking. This method gives you significant control over the staking process, but requires a high technical expertise. Additionally, not everyone meets the requirement for this. For example, to stake natively on the Ethereum blockchain, you need at least 32 ETH. This presents a high barrier for many people. If you run the staking yourself at home, uh, you're a hero, it's very important for the network, and you need to make sure you're keeping your software updates up and running because if your staking computer gets hacked, that could be very risky for your for your money. The worst case scenario is to lose everything. So you want to make sure you know what you're doing there. So the second option is to let your exchange handle staking for you. Many centralized crypto exchanges offer staking services in exchange for a fee. This is the easiest way to do it. You don't need any technical knowledge and there are no barriers to entry for participating. However, the downside is that you face a centralization risk. If the exchange goes under, you may lose all your staked crypto. At the end of the day, you're trusting this exchange to give you your money back. You're also trusting them not to get the validator slashed. The third option is called liquid staking. In liquid staking protocols, you can stake your crypto in exchange for a liquid token, which is equivalent in value to the amount you staked. The advantage of this method is that you can still access the value of the staked asset through the liquidity token and use it for various purposes. Popular liquid staking platforms include Lido and Rocket Pool. You're essentially trading your asset for a different asset, which is like a valet claim. So if I go to a restaurant and I want to valet my car, they still have my car, but I have a ticket that says I can get my car back at any point that I want to. The drawback of liquid staking solutions is that they still carry some centralization risks. You're trusting their governance process and you're trusting their their uh, oracle to update the status of the staking system. Now they're, they're battle hardened and a lot of people trust them, but it's still a relatively complex system. So how much can you realistically earn in staking? That highly depends on the crypto you decide to stake and the platform you choose. For example, if you stake $5,000 worth of Solana using the p2p.org platform, you can earn a 6.47% APR. Assuming the price of Solana remains the same as at the time of recording, this means you would earn $323 in staking rewards over the course of one year. Remember, don't select a cryptocurrency for staking, basing your choice solely on the reward rate. Higher rewards often come with higher risks. Ensure you believe in the long-term potential of the cryptocurrency you are staking. Also, remember that by locking in your crypto, you may not be able to withdraw it quickly if you decide to sell. So it's important to know the details of your staking operator. How custodial is it? Who, who am I trusting? How magic is this machine? If you're not comfortable with it, you know, stay, stay away from it. Another simple way to earn a passive income in crypto is via crypto savings accounts. Several platforms allow you to earn interest on your crypto similarly to depositing money in a traditional bank savings account. As in traditional finance, 
your funds are lent to borrowers who must pay a certain interest rate. The advantage is that these platforms usually offer significantly higher interest rates than traditional savings accounts. While interest rates for most deposit accounts in the US and Europe are in the low single digits, crypto savings accounts offer interest rates higher than 10% on certain cryptocurrencies. The risk with this method lies in, again, centralization. You are not in control of your crypto and these platforms do not offer the same safety guarantees as traditional banks. Remember, not your keys, not your coins. The way that they're able to offer you these uh, enormous rates is they do unsecured lending to high risky borrowers such as hedge funds and trading desks. They're going to be lending that unsecured to people who think they're great traders. A good example of this risk is the story around Celsius, a crypto lending platform that used to be run by Alex Mashinsky. It was offering interest rates as high as 18%, posing as a reliable crypto bank. However, it turned out to be a fraud, resulting in the loss of most customers' funds in crypto gambles. If you don't understand the source of the yield or where the yield is coming from, it is most likely that you are the yield, i.e. you are likely contributing to a Ponzi scheme where you could end up losing everything. I uh, had currency at BlockFi. They were an exchange and a savings and interest platform in one. And I almost lost currency there. They were able to get it all back to me. Um, and I withdrew and had to pay their um, agent company a huge fee to get my money well, my money back. I would lend centralized crypto savings account, but only with exchanges that are maximum level of trustworthiness and only exchanges that are paying you uh, no better than the uh, prevailing U.S. interest rate. So Kraken pays you 5%. Why is that? Because that's what they make with low-risk U.S. T-bill investments. They're not out there giving your cash to these unsecured crypto cowboys. So if you decide to go this route, make sure to understand how the platform is paying out interest rates. Where do they come from? How is the platform using your crypto? This video is supported by StormTrade, a cutting-edge perpetual DEX and Telegram. Trade perpetual futures on crypto, forex, equities, and commodities. Integrated with Telegram Wallet for easy onboarding. With a $10 million daily volume, it's perfect for both beginners and advanced traders. Join StormTrade on Telegram and start trading. Yield farming is very similar to staking. The difference is, instead of contributing to the functioning of a blockchain protocol, you are providing liquidity to a decentralized exchange as a liquidity provider. A decentralized exchange operates on a blockchain protocol, meaning it's not controlled by a centralized authority. So how does it work exactly? Liquidity providers usually deposit two assets that form the trading pair in a liquidity pool. By providing liquidity, you earn a share of transaction fees from traders using that pool. Getting started with yield farming is fairly simple. You just need to sign up on a reputable yield farming protocol such as Curve, Compound, Aave, and Uniswap. Then you download a non-custodial wallet like Metamask and connect it to that platform. Finally, you deposit your tokens and start earning yields. Annual returns can vary significantly depending on the cryptocurrency pair you stake. For example, you can earn about 68% on the GOG ETH pair on SushiSwap, while the more conservative USDC ETH pair on the same platform offers around 5%. Now, let's have a look at the pros and cons of yield farming. Unlike a crypto savings account, in yield farming, you usually keep ownership over your crypto, reducing the centralization risk. However, there is a potentially high technological risk. Bugs in the protocol and exploits are common. You're putting money into a smart contract if it's not audited properly or has security vulnerability, you could lose all your money. So it's going to be much riskier, typically speaking, than a very secure network like Ethereum. It's one of those things that can be quite lucrative or you can end up being exit liquidity. You'll see on a lot of these like rug pulls or like meme coins that will have extremely high APRs to supply liquidity on a pool. Um, and the reason for that is they once you LP, they use that USDC that you have that that you, that you, that you have uh, supplied to the Uniswap pool, and they use that as exit liquidity, pretty much, right? They'll just grab all of your USDC. So you have to be very careful. Additionally, rates provided by liquidity pools often fluctuate, making it challenging to generate consistent returns. Finally, pay attention to what currency your yield is denominated in. 
So if I'm doing yield farming and my yield is in USDC, then all right, I know it's US dollars, I know it's locked in, or if my yield is in Ether, I know I'm know I'm getting that Ether gold standard of of on-chain money. But if you're doing yield farming and you're getting, you know, 138% APY, but your yield is in a food token, like who knows if you're going to be able to exit that? Mining stands out as another popular method to generate passive income in the crypto sphere. Miners play a vital role in validating transactions on proof of work blockchains and are rewarded with block rewards. However, mining requires technical expertise and significant initial investments in mining rigs. That is why most people opt for cloud mining. Cloud mining allows users to lease a certain amount of hashing power from miners without the need to invest in expensive mining hardware and run it. To start, you simply sign up with a cloud mining provider and buy a plan that best suits your needs. Costs depend on the amount of hash power you want to rent. Once you pay for the contract, the provider will start mining cryptocurrency for you. The advantage of cloud mining is that you outsource the mining process, eliminating the need for technical know-how and reducing the upfront costs. Yet, cloud mining comes with its drawbacks. Returns from cloud mining as in traditional mining are influenced by several factors, including cryptocurrency prices and mining difficulty. With cloud mining, you won't have the flexibility to upgrade your hardware and adapt it to market conditions. Additionally, cloud mining is subject to a high centralization risk. Your investment is fully dependent on the provider that is mining on your behalf. There's a huge trust factor uh, when it comes to mining pools where you're paying to be a part of the pool using someone else's hardware. There's a possibility that the pool could earn a reward and the operator of that pool will not pay out as much as they're supposed to. Be aware of scams in the space. This video is also brought to you by Zaros, a perpetuals dex transforming futures trading with boosted restaking vaults. Leveraging liquid staking and restaking tokens, Zaros offers unmatched liquidity and a user-friendly interface. Trade 15 assets easily with upcoming features like cross-margin support and high-frequency trading. Backed by top venture funds and investors, Zaros is set to lead the derivatives market. Visit the website to start trading today. With affiliate programs, you can earn money by promoting a specific crypto platform or product. Many crypto platforms, especially cryptocurrency exchanges, have affiliate programs. Simply check their website for the affiliate section and sign up. You'll receive a unique referral link to share on your social media or with your network. Every time someone signs up on the platform through your link, you will earn some rewards. This could be a one-time commission or, in the case of a trading platform, a percentage of every transaction fee. Earning passive income with affiliate programs is pretty straightforward and doesn't require any technical expertise. It's probably the least risky method to earn a passive income among those covered in this video. However, making significant income from it is challenging unless you have a large social media following. Some programs require you to already have a certain number of followers on social media. For instance, with the Binance referral program, you need to have at least 5,000 followers on one or more of your social media platforms. You have to build a lot of traffic to your site. You have to build trust with an audience and then build those affiliate relationships and have traffic going to those affiliate pages and people signing up. So I wouldn't say that's passive, that's a lot of work. Before signing up for an affiliate program, consider factors like the commission rate, payout frequency, and the reputation of the platform you'll be promoting. Choose established platforms like Coinbase, Kraken, or Binance, as they all offer their own affiliate programs. You don't want to associate yourself with shady crypto platforms. So as you can see, there are multiple ways you can put your crypto to work and earn an income from it. Each comes with its own risks and advantages. Yes, earning a stable passive income from crypto is not that easy. Returns still highly depend on market conditions. Your monthly revenue is likely to change significantly depending on whether you are in a bull or bear market. Still, earning a passive income with crypto is a good way to limit the negative impact of high volatility. It helps you offset some of the losses you may incur during a bear market 
and maximize profits during a bull market. Now, I'm curious to know your favorite methods for earning a passive income in crypto. Let us know in the comment below. I hope this was helpful. I'm Giovanni, your host. See you next time.